What's up, everybody? Axe Wizard here, working on my game some more. I wasn't able to sleep, but I just wanted to dink around with Godot some more. I'm just having a lot of fun with this engine. So let me just start the game and get you up to speed on where I am. So you notice I've got two ships. When last we left off, I could shoot. I've got sound working now. And if we make this pig full screen here, let me just get up close really quick. Because this is a cool thing I discovered. So I'm getting closer. Okay, let me just fire. I also got the uh, shield to work as well. So that all sounds good. And then if we go like over here, it gets get like the maximum distance th that we can. There we go. If I can aim. I missed. See how distant that sound what was? So the audio system in Godot is pretty sweet. As you can see, I'm getting closer and, uh, you know, it's making those sounds better. The shield's working uh, exactly how it should. There we go. Now we're hitting the, the ship. Now the only thing we don't, we haven't done is, uh, I haven't figured out how to vary the, the sound of it yet, but I think I can, I can do that pretty well. So, so let's go over what I've, uh, what I've been able to accomplish so far. So since last episode... I was able to fire projectiles, but I, I wasn't hitting anything. So the first thing we should probably cover is um, how I'm handling uh, detecting the collisions. So first things first, on my ship scene, if we go to 2D, ship 1. So I've got this, uh, this area 2D node, and I have a polygon a collision polygon here. So this area 2D allows me to detect collisions without using physics like everything in the game manual like wants you to. So for example, if you're you know, let's see, let's just go to I don't know. Let's go back to script online docs. Right? So if you're doing uh like tutorials here like 2D and like movement and and all that stuff like that, everything is showing you using like kinematic body 2D, which is a a physics node, which would which which is awesome. That is like most games are probably going to want to use that cuz you can do a lot of cool things with physics and um I think Game Maker does have a physics system, but it's not it's not nearly as nice as 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 uh, Godot. But for my game here, I don't want physics. The one thing I really want that's kind of physics is like, you know, drifting my ship through space, but I don't want to collide with other ships. Uh, like I, I don't want to physically collide with them. Um, that'd be awful. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so the, I was reading a lot about these and, you know, because everything wants you to use kinematic body 2D. And apparently there's a way that you can actually add exclusions to your collision list, but I don't want to add every single object in the game to an exclusion list to not collide with it. So, and even then, if I still want to collide with it, but just not physically collide with it, how, how do I, how do I do that? So after doing some, some digging and research, it looks like I, I'm on the right path. I'm just using like a standard node 2D for, for my stuff. Actually, this is technically type ship. But if we go to my classes here and my ship, my ship class extends just the basic node 2D. So I'm not really doing anything fancy there. So back to the scene. Um, so I've got this area 2D, which I made a parent of the sprite because I have to... Um, I rotate the, the ship sprite directly, which I might not have to, now that I think about it, I might just be able to just, just to rotate the ship, but I think I ran into a problem with that when I was first starting out, so I'm going to leave it like that for now, I might dig into that later, but, so I got everything as a child of the sprite because I'm manually controlling the, the sprite rotation, because I think when I was working it out, initially, I think the, the ship direction was like influencing my my movement which i which i didn't want so 
But now that now now that I think about it, now that I, I know more, I think I can probably factor that out and just make area two D and all these weapon slots and shields and, and, and everything else that relies on my ship being rotated, I can just make those just a child of ship one as opposed to sprite. But it's working now. I'm gonna leave it how it is for now. So yeah, I made that and what this what area two D allows me to do is it allows me to detect those collisions. So right now the only thing I really want to collide with is projectiles. So let's go to my uh, projectile code you see I also have an area 2d and a collision shape attached to this uh, these projectiles as well and you'll notice that this uh, this area 2d here is hooked up to a signal and I did that like over here so area 2d has a signal that's called area entered and I basically just connected that to my uh, my class it, it let me do that and you can see this function here is connected to the my area 2d's area entered signal so when this signal gets passed up to my script here to, to my listener um i'm basically just checking hey are we colliding with another ship so the first thing i'm doing is i'm taking advantage of what's called groups so in in game maker it, i would be able to just like detect hey is this a, a, a obj ship uh, Godot doesn't, doesn't do that, but what you can do is that when you create a instance, um, so if we go to ship here, um, so on this ready uh, function here, which is kind of like the, the create event in Game Maker, I add it, I add ourselves to the group ships. And so now that we're part of that group, that group is like global, it's like accessible by, by any node. So what I'm doing in my, uh, let's go back to projectile here. I'm just checking, hey, is the, th is the thing that we're colliding with, is its owner in the group ships? Now, the cool thing about owner is that uh, since I'm doing everything as like sort of prefab style where I have all these different scenes. So for example, like all of my ships are going to have different scenes, but they're all using the, the, the same code but every scene uh, allows me to customize things specifically for each ship. So for example, how many weapon slots it has, the collision shape that it has, the size of the, the shield sprite, the sprite that it's actually using for the ship. All of those things are gonna be ship dependent, not, the, the, I can't make those uh, universal, at least without without the game sucking. <laughs> so, so that lets me do that. Now, the cool thing about it is since we're doing a scenes, um, the keyword owner gets the like who the the node that owns everything inside the scene that your node is in so the nice thing about that is so on my ship scene yeah so we have an area 2d here now i might move this around i might make this a child of ship one again um so, so but since it's not a direct child it's technically a grandchild of, of ship one I wouldn't be able to do like get parent and, and have that work. So get owner just gets the, the owner of all the nodes in the scene. So, so this area 2D is owned by ship one. So that lets me do a lot of cool stuff. So what we're doing is uh, when we collide with that, the signal passes us another area 2D of the other area that we are colliding with. So in this case, since this, this code is from the, the projectile, it's getting the area 2D that we're colliding with of the ship. So um, it, could, it could also be getting the other area 2D of like other projectiles as well, which is why I'm, I have logic in here that's saying, hey, is this part of group ships? If it's not a ship, then just return. Just return early, we've done everything. So next thing we need to do is we've collided with the ship, but make sure that we're not colliding with ourselves because I ran into a problem where I was, where I was, I was able to shoot myself. When I created uh, the projectiles, some of them were, were already in that area and they were just doing damage to, to myself. So we're just saying, hey, if is, is area owner uh, ship owner? And what I do is I have a variable here called ship owner that I just set to, to type node, uh, which encompasses like everything. Um, so when we, I think it's in our weapon code here. So when we actually go to fire a projectile, uh, we're setting the ship owner. Now, where does the, the weapon get the, the ship owner from? 
Um, this is all. This is set when we're added to our ship array. So weapons are added from weapon slots. So let's go to weapon slot. Uh, so let's see here. Oh, that's part of my ship. Sorry, I forgot. I haven't fixed that part yet. So what I'm doing is uh, when the I, I definitely have to fix this because this is super super inefficient. Whenever I try to fire, I'm getting the uh, uh, weapons which is just recursively going through all of my nodes attached to my ship and seeing if any of them are our type weapon. And then I'm firing every weapon I have. So that's where we are getting that. So this get weapons function, uh, let's see. I know I'm like setting it somewhere. Oh, right. I changed this fire weapon thing, uh, this fire weapon method. So if we, if we go back to weapon here, uh, ship owner, so I probably don't even need this anymore, actually, because I'm I have this right here. So I can just get rid of this. Cool. I forgot about that. Uh wait, can I? P ship owner equal ship owner. Yeah. So I can just get rid of that because I don't need that. So in my fire weapon, I'm taking that in as an argument here, and then I'm just passing that down to my projectile. So whew. I'm glad I'm doing this video now before I get even more confused. <laughs> I've just, I've been playing and like tweaking things so much that I just kind of forget where I was at. So, so yeah, I've, uh, I've got that ship owner variable and we're just making sure that we're not colliding with ourselves. And then, uh, if we are, then just do nothing. If we are colliding with a ship, um, Initially, I was having the projectile like deal the damage. So, like in in Game Maker, I had the projectile like in the collision event when you were colliding w with a ship. Um, if it was on the the list of baddies that should have been hit, um, then you're basically you're you're manipulating those that other nodes variables or that other objects variables. But in 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 Godot, I think that's a lot less safe to do. So what I'm doing is I'm simply calling. I made a function on the ship called take damage. And uh, what I'm doing is uh, I'm just calling that other ship's uh, take damage. And so this just takes in the amount of damage that it's supposed to take. And then I, I do my same calculations that I was kind of doing before in Game Maker where I was seeing, hey, do I have shields that should be absorbing this? Um, if they do, then absorb the uh, uh, damage, reduce your shields, and then play the sound of uh, the shield being hit. Um, if you can absorb some of the damage, then do that, and then play the sound of the shield going down. And then if your shields are complete, completely gone, then just play the uh, then take the 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 full damage to your ship, and then just set the the sound to play the ship hit sound. So. That's what's going on there. We're going to get into the sound in just a minute. So that was how I was able to work out, uh, you know, doing uh, player, uh, I guess, just collisions, like non-physics collisions, like detecting collisions. Like if, if, if I'm shooting something, does it, does it actually do that? So it seems to be working pretty well. So I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with that. Now let's get into the sound. The sound that I, I just figured out. So for the sound, what I did is I just added an audio stream player 2D. Now this is really cool because uh, there's an audio stream player and there's also an audio stream player 2D and 3D. So 2D gives you like sort of a spatial, uh, spatial options. So for example, um, I get sounds, I should, Crank, the, crank this up because this was, I wanted 4,000. So what 2D allows you to do is you have a max distance and then you can also change the uh, attenuation of, of how it sounds. So what this means is that, say if I have it set to, to 4,000, oops, I want 4,000. Um, if I'm 2,000 uh, distance away or, or a sound is being played 2,000 uh, distance away from me, it's going to play at like half the uh, uh, volume. So that gives you that really cool effect to where, you know, you have that spatial awareness. And then also, I think you have the option of like having stereo. So if you're playing with headphones, if someone's shooting you from the left, it's probably going to come in, in your left headphone more. That's awesome. I would, it would be an absolute pain to implement that in Game Maker. I don't even know how I would start doing that in, in Game Maker. 
this just does it for me out of the box. I just got to set one little field and then we're good to go. So there's a few ways that you can do it. If you're just going to be working with a, you know, if you're, if you, whatever node you're working on is only going to ever play one sound, then you can just set the stream, which is basically the, the audio uh, that needs to play. And if I, since I, since I'm doing like web files or whatever, I just do audio stream sample and then I can just drag. So I, I, I imported my sounds here and I can just like drag a sound over here. Right. And then that would let me do that. But you don't have to do that if you don't want to. You can also do it with code. So I'm going to clear that out. Save. Let's go back to my ship here. Uh, ship script. Projectile ship. So what we can do is that I'm uh, I'm doing a few things here. So first thing, I have an on ready variable declaration here. And I'm just uh, declaring a variable called sound player. And I'm, it's of the type audio stream player 2D, which is right here. And it's just able to dynamically get that path since it's a child of my node. Uh, it's able to get that. Now I have to make sure that every prefab I make has this because this is part of the, the ship class. And if, if all of my uh, scenes don't conform to these requirements, it, it will crash the, the game. So that's why I only have one ship right now. I want to get it right, and then I can just copy and paste and make all the uh, ship prefabs for all my scenes and, and adjust all the little details that, that need to happen for that um, and make that work. So, And then here I'm preloading some of the sounds that we're going to need. So we're going to need the sound of the shield being hit because, again, the take damage function is being called from us. Like we're, We, are, we are, are executing that whenever we get hit. So we need a, the sound of the shield being hit, we need the sound of the shield going down, and the sound of our ship getting hit. And we're setting these as type audio stream sample, which you just saw me do um, here through the, the node editor, audio stream sample. And we're just preloading that path. And again, you can right click a resource and just go to copy path or hit control shift C, and you can just paste that in that way there's no typos. So I've got those down, and then when it comes time to actually call the sounds, if we go down to my uh, take damage function here. So we're referencing my sound player variable, which is set to, to my audio stream player 2D. And what I'm doing is I'm calling the set stream uh, function, and I'm just setting it to that sound shield hit, which is the audio stream that we prepared earlier. And then I'm setting it to play. There you go. That's how you do sound. That's easy. That's fantastic. Now I'm going to be curious to see how it works when I get like, you know, 200 ships on the uh, screen again, because I might run into the same problem in game maker that I had to where only so many sounds can be played at once, but I'm curious to see how Godot's going to handle that. Um, very curious to see, but uh, I don't, uh, I, I don't have AI and stuff working yet. So that's going to be a, a later video, but for now, that's how I'm handling sound, and I think that's pretty easy. So I'm just setting the stream that I want to play, and I'm just playing the sound. So, super cool. Then that seems to work, and it sounds awesome. So if we go back to the game, you know, if I'm right here, you know, I'm just grilling this ship. It sounds pretty good. And then if I, let's make this bigger. There we go. And if I slow down here, I start shooting the ship again. There we go. We got that distant sound. That sounds good. I like that. That sounds great. And it's getting louder as we as we get closer. So this will this is this will add that immersion that I I, I kind of wanted to where it's like you know if you're launching missiles in space because missiles like last a while and you, like you hear an impact in the distance or even worse like if you zone into uh, uh, a, a a star system and you start hearing people launching weapons you're like what the heck and you start seeing them come on screen you're like oh snap I gotta go <laughs> so it's gonna be super cool I I'm excited for that but. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting the hang of Godot, and I'm really having just a blast with this engine. 
I'm sure that there's going to be some things that I don't like. Uh, I, I, we already talked about signals. I think that's a, a kind of a pain, but I think I just need to, to do some more research on signals and uh, get them working. So I already have a, a working signal in my, my projectile um, scene, I think. Uh, let's see, where was it? Projectiles. Was it projectiles? Yeah, area 2D. Here we go. So I've got that signal that is connected. Now, that's cool. And it seems to work for uh, both uh, both medium cannon projectile and light cannon projectile. That was one thing I was worried about that wasn't going to work. But, you know, they're, they're two, they're, they're both different scenes. All they, all they really have is, but, but they're, they're structured the, the same way. They have a type projectile as the root, a sprite, area 2D, and a collision shape. And they're the same either way. So, I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, that, that, that's as far as I've gotten right now. I just wanted to make a quick update because I've been playing around with a bunch of different stuff. I, I, I didn't want to get lost in the... Uh, Lost in the sauce. I didn't want to get lost in the sauce. So that's how it's working there. Uh, next thing I need to work on is, let's see. What else do I need to do before I start tackling like the, the big stuff? So we've got sounds working. We've got like projectiles being fired. Let's fire up Game Maker really quick and see where, like what kind of stuff we're, we're, we're missing. All right, so I just fired up Game Maker. Let's run the game. I think it'll still run. I had a problem where I was copying some resources from it. I was like dragging and dropping from folder to folder. And uh, I'm used to doing that to my external drive with like my videos that I upload and stuff. And uh, well, if you're, if you're located in the same drive, it, 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 it cuts, it moves it. It uh, doesn't copy it. So I, I moved a bunch of, of assets over into Godot, and next thing I know, my game wouldn't run, so I had to I had to add them back. But let's see. Okay, so I obviously behind the uh, besides the obvious stuff um, of like more ships and variety and stuff like that and weapons, um, I've got a, a reticle for the mouse, so I can probably figure that out. Um, I've got missiles. I need to figure those out. And then of course like AI and and the uh, faction system, but I'm talking about stuff I need to tackle before. Oh, and thrusters, so particles. Particles are what I need to tackle next, I think. And after looking through the particle system in Godot, I'm not even worried. So particle system. It has, it's so cool. Like there's, uh, this is fantastic. Um, so this this right here local coordinates remember when i was trying to make uh when i i had a a missile trail for like my my rockets and that was working great but the problem is when i made the change to how projectiles move to where they also take into account like ship um inertia so if my ship is drifting up, but it's pointing to, to the side and it shoots a, a projectile, how it would work is it would fire the, the projectile, the projectile would go here and the ship would, would keep going up. And that was very weird. When in reality, it would actually take into account your, your, you would fire it, your ship would go up and your projectile would also take that into account. Um, and so doing that change borked how the missiles looked because then like your, your missiles flying here but then like your your trails coming out this way from the side it looks stupid with this local coordinates that won't matter it'll just whatever direction i want it to to face which will be you know the the opposite way the 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 missile is like facing the actual sprites facing bam so that solves that problem there so i could add missile trail back in i when i couldn't do that with uh with game maker not without extreme uh like <laughs> extreme meddling to make it work how i want to this just has it built in fantastic so and generating particles is also a lot easier whereas in game maker i you know i had to go here in the code let me try to zoom in on this trash so you can see so if we go to our scripts and we go to particle control 
you know, I'm setting up this huge particle system. I'm setting up uh, two particle systems for top and bottom. I'm setting up a particle emitters for top and bottom. And I'm setting up missile explosion. And this is uh, this is where I'm setting up a particle type. And then I'm setting all these things manually. And every time I wanted to see this work, I had to um, I had to run it. I had to run the game in order to actually do it. Well, in in Godot. If you want to play with particles, the scene will actually play the particle effect for you so you can just do it in real time. So that's going to be super cool. And uh, yeah, I think I think particles is what I'm going to tackle next. So particles, getting a cursor uh, working, and then so particles. So I probably also need to work out uh, the rocket projectile because that works a little bit different than the, the standard basic... Uh, projectiles so yeah i'll probably work on that next and uh we'll see uh we'll see how it works but i'm pretty confident i can get it working and, and pretty quick too like honestly since last episode i've maybe only spent an hour and i was able to to figure out collisions which was something i was i was really worried about and not only that as a bonus, I got my shield working, and I also got sound working, too. I think all those were, like, different episodes on their own in, in Game Maker. But, yeah. Come on. So, I think one thing I, did, I do notice is that, um... I think the audio player can only pl like play one sound at one time. So what's happening is I was listening for the uh, uh, for the shield to to go down, but all I it went straight from shield impact to ship impact, and I think it's because you know it got hit by three bullets at the uh, same time, and it played the the shield down sound, but it was immediately cut out by the the, the next impact. So. I might have to look into that, but I can work with it. So far, I mean, I'm I'm geeking out, man. This is great. I'm loving it. And this is just, once I get the hang of it, like I, I feel like I, I'm picking up speed and I'm just moving along. And this is, this is awesome. Uh, <laughs> contrast that to like two or three episodes ago when I was first starting in, in Godot and I, I felt so defeated because I was like, okay, I'm going to get ship movement going, and I didn't even understand how vectors work, and it was just, it was not fun. I was like, oh, it's only going to take me like five episodes to get everything ported over. It's going to be great. And then it was just, uh, yeah, three hours later, I couldn't even get my ship to move, and I did that in like five minutes in Game Maker. So anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next episode.